So here photons disappear from the universe, here they come out with lower energy. So Dean Chapman is a leading physicist who knows a lot about energy on the scientific level. He also has more than enough energy of his own. I really like that sense of, oh yeah, this is new, you know, this is really cool. And, <laughs> but I really do like this sense of, you know, discovering something. That love of discovery is what feeds Dean Chapman's infectious energy and enthusiasm. He just loves to be in on firsts. For starters, he's come to the University of Saskatchewan where he's helping to spark entirely new collaborations between scientists of different fields. He's also helping to build the first biomedical beamline at Canada's first and only synchrotron, the Canadian light source. Now if you're wondering what a synchrotron does, it generates amazingly powerful beams of light that zoom down pathways or beamlines that in turn shine light deep into almost anything like Dean Chapman's own lungs. He was one of the first people in the world ever to be imaged with synchrotron light. He was also on a team that discovered an entirely new way to image with x-rays. X-rays are so great because they go through you in straight lines, but not quite. Looking at how much x-rays refract or bend became the subject of a late night experiment at the Brookhaven synchrotron in New York. Dean and two colleagues got some interesting results, but only after weeks of calculations did Dean discover just what they had. It gives rise to a strange phone call that Bill got, Bill Tomlinson got one day, where I told him that, that I've got refraction. I said, oh yeah, Dean, that's great. My wife's going to be excited too. What are you talking about? Being my usual kind of clunky way of telling people things, it, it, he totally mystified by what I was talking about. I had no idea. What Dean had discovered was a way to pull images from the data they obtained. Images made not from the x-rays that get absorbed by the body, but from the x-rays that bend and go through. That event I'll never forget, and it's a goosebump event, and it was just, uh, you know, like, you're looking at something that nobody has ever done before. They called the technique DEI, or Diffraction Enhanced Imaging. It makes for much lower doses of radiation, and it images cancer like nothing else. First, take a look at this conventional x-ray. Here, and you can see the cancer here quite well. It's white. And so the interest isn't so much in this, but you can see all these radiating lines, and it's not clear. I mean, it's clear that there's something going on here. Um, but with DEI, that all becomes very clear. You can see there's actually something going on over here, and you can see all the radiating lines. Bill Tomlinson, now executive director of the Canadian Light Source, was part of the team that discovered DEI. With the financial support of the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, he lured Dean Chapman to come to the U of S and take up the prestigious post of Canada Research Chair in X-ray Imaging. Dean is, is an extraordinary individual. I've often said that that's because he grew up on an Oklahoma farm and when you're 10 miles away from the nearest help and your tractor breaks, and you've got a screwdriver, you have to fix it. And Dean can do that. Part of Dean Chapman's role at the U of S is to get new scientists using the synchrotron and to encourage multidisciplinary collaborations. It's given him a very different work environment. For one thing, Dean's now got a lab full of skeletons and bones to get used to. Yes, the last lab I moved into was the physics lab, and you open the drawers and you find things you're kind of used to finding in a lab, and you open a drawer and here you find some bones. There's bones all over the place. So. That's because Dean is currently working in the Department of Anatomy and Cell Biology. Earlier in my career, I would never, never have thought that you know, I would, would give up being in a physics department. But it's such an, uh, such an amazing opportunity to do really, really cool things. Like helping neurosurgeon Elizabeth Schultke develop tiny new devices to help with spinal cord research. Anyway, it should work. Supervising Nagarajan Alagansami, a graduate student in bioengineering. I'm trying to figure out how this is supposed to be connected. Reading the manual doesn't help at all. <laughs> <laughs> and getting together with some of Canada's top scientists and medical researchers to plan some very exciting new joint projects. This place is so ideally suited for this kind of research. There's a college of medicine, there's a veterinary college, there's a Canadian light source. It's like the center of the universe. So here in the center of the universe, the University of Saskatchewan that is, Dean Chapman continues to plan for new experiments and world firsts. And if you're wondering where all this may lead... I think uh, world domination is at hand. For Research News at the University of Saskatchewan, I'm Jennifer Weber.